this morning, I thought we would talk a little about faith and fear in our decision making. Because in a, there's a great verse I wanted to start with in Hebrews 12, verse 1. I don't know. Do you guys use Bibles in this church? Yeah? Cool. The King James Version, right, Dan? Sure, I read out of the uh, English Standard Version, which is very similar to the New American Standard Version, only it comes in cool looking Bibles like this. It's got like patterns and things on it. This is very important if you're in ministry. These are little things they don't teach you in Bible school. Yeah. Um, so we know that if Christ died for our sins, if we know that he has brought us to new life, if we know that he's coming again someday, and like the scripture says, this world, the heavens and the earth are going to be destroyed with fire, and that he's going to bring a new heaven and a new earth, it talks a little, it should help us understand a little bit of how we should live now and how we should think now. Like, say you have a car and you've got a time bomb strapped to the back of it, okay? And you're driving around town. When the clock's ticking down from 10 to 1, you're not going to take the car in to get it washed and waxed because it doesn't matter. The car is just going to blow up. It makes no difference whatsoever how the car looks when it blows up. The same thing's true with our earthly life here. God gives us this life, and it doesn't matter what we do in this earth in terms of having the best stuff, having a great house, having the perfect little family that everybody looks up to. None of that makes any difference. What matters, what matters is, do we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength? And do we love our neighbors as ourselves? And have we given our lives to running with endurance the race he's put before us to make disciples of all the nations. That's what our movement is founded on, is the Great Commission, is the idea that every single person in this room, every single person who has the Holy Spirit of God living in them, has been called to the mission of making disciples. They've been called to step out of their comfort zone and live their life for the sake of others coming to know Christ as their Savior and helping them to grow to maturity if we understand that, I hope we all do, at least in our heads. I know all of us, every single one of us, struggles with that in our heart, with really, truly, every day walking in what God wants us to do. And that's, that's part of life. But our goal, our desire should be to run hard for the rest of our lives for God and for what he wants. So I hope we're all, I gave you a nice little introduction there. I hope we all turn to Hebrews 12.1. It shouldn't have taken as long as I talked. I'll, I'll forewarn you. Paul, or, uh, Dan said I could talk anywhere between 20 minutes and an hour and 20 minutes. Um, this summer I had to talk. I had 45 minutes and I went for an hour and 15 and didn't even realize it. I was done. So we'll see how this goes. What am I supposed to be done anyways, Dan? It doesn't matter. No closing time. All oh, right. So here, here we go. Hebrews 12.1. This is a verse after the author of Hebrews, is talking about the hall of faith. It's this list of all the people that were justified by faith to encourage us in our walk. But Hebrews 12, 1 is right after that. It says, Therefore, since we have, are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which closes, clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So, we're encouraged to run with endurance the race that is set before us. But it says there are two things that can slow us down, that can cling to us and trip us up as we're running for God. Two things, okay? First one says, let us lay aside every weight. And the second thing is, let us lay aside our sin. And if you notice, there's a difference between weights and sins in terms of things that will cause us not to run for God. And so we all know sins. Sins are choices or behaviors in our life that are directly in disobedience to God's law or the way God has designed this world. And for the most part, I know very well what my sins are. I'm pretty well acquainted with my sin. I know when I'm being disobedient to God. I know when I'm being rebellious. And that's part of our fallen nature that still clings to us, our sin. And God wants us to grow and be sanctified and to turn away from our sin. 
But there's another thing in here that'll slow us down, and I want to talk a little bit about that today. Um, the New American Standard Version calls it an encumbrance or a weighty thing. There are things in our life that weigh us down. They're not sin, per se, but they weigh us down and they slow us down from following God with our whole heart. And there's one particular weight I want to talk to you guys about today, and that's the weight of fear in our decisions. I know for me, I am a coward. Everything I do, I'm actually pretty scared of. Coming here today to talk to you guys is toward the bottom of the things I wanted to do this morning in terms of what I want. Because I'm scared of you guys. I am. What if I say the wrong thing? What if I do the wrong thing? What if uh, you guys get angry at me and stone me like Stephen? I don't know how your church works. I've never been here before. <laughs> I hear there's a while there that every GCLI, which is our leadership conference for our movement, Dan would recruit everyone to come and speak at Foundation. And there's a whole line of people who would come and speak here, but I never heard of them coming back. <laughs> Scares me. When I'm sharing the gospel with people, I'm scared. I'm scared. I shake in my boots every time we have to go evangelize. There's times I sit in my car when our church says, we're going to go out and evangelize. And I'm literally shaking and praying, I do not want to do this. I'm scared to death of talking to people. <laughs> it's a funny story. When I was in college, my mom had always cut my hair growing up. She always cut my hair. But then I decided I should go get a real haircut. I pulled up to the barber shop and I was petrified. I had no idea what to do. You go in a barber shop, you're like, how do you want it done? I've seen the movies. I don't know how I want my hair cut. Just cut it. Mom just cuts it. Why are all these questions? I'm scared. I'm a scaredy cat by nature. And so fear in my life has been one of the biggest things that slows me down in truly running hard for God. Truly running hard for God. And so I want to encourage you guys with a couple of thoughts I had. I think a lot of times in our own lives, without even realizing it, fear dictates a lot of what we do. And the choices we make, whether big or small, whether what job are we going to work at, or are we going to go to McDonald's or Wendy's for lunch, are dictated out of fear instead of out of faith. And it says in the Word, whatever is not from faith is sin. So when we're making choices in life that aren't driven by faith, it's basically saying, I don't trust God enough to really believe what he says. I think there's faith in every decision we make. So, first off, what is faith? What is fear? I think that's a good thing to get our, wrap our minds around because I think in a lot of ways, they're pretty much the same thing. Let's turn to Hebrews 11. Back a page. Verse 1. I imagine many of us are well acquainted with this verse. It's kind of the definition of what faith is. All right. Hebrews 11, verse 1. It says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. Um, and I look at that. Being a pastor's kid, I knew this verse forward and backwards. But I never really understood what it meant. I'm like, I don't assurance of things hoped for and convictions of things not seen. I don't even get it. What is that talking about? So I thought it'd be good to break it down a little bit here. It says, now the faith, the definition of faith is the assurance of things hoped for. And the word there in the Greek for assurance, it has the idea of something that you build upon. It's like the foundation. So faith is the foundation of our hope. Our faith and our belief is what our hope is built upon. Without faith, there is no hope. And without hope, faith is really, really kind of not that great. It's just a foundation. It's like you're building a house. The foundation holds up the house. If you just have a foundation and no house, it, I mean, it might be nice as a swimming pool, but it's not very good as a house. So our faith is our foundation that we build our hope upon. And the conviction of the things not seen. The word conviction there has the idea of the proof. Our faith proves what we cannot see. It's what holds it to be true. And so that's what faith is. Faith 
helps us really believe what we can't see, that there is an invisible God who created this world, created every single one of us in his image, who give, gave us his written word to help us understand that in reality he loves us, that we're sinful, but that he solved our problem. He wants us to be with him, so he gave his son to die for our sins, that we could be with him for eternity, and someday he's going to come, he's going to take us with him. That's our faith. That's what we're convinced of. If we really have true faith, it's saying, someday, either when I die or when the Lord comes home, I have an eternal life that will continue on. And that is our hope. That's what faith brings, is if we have faith in the word of God, we have true and real hope in our hearts. So that's faith. So what about fear? I think fear is the same thing, only instead of the object being hope, the object is anticipated pain. We fear. Fear is the, the assurance of future pain. The fear is the uh, conviction that things unseen are going to be bad. They're not going to be good. And so when we fear, what we're really saying is, wow, I think the future is going to hurt. Webster's Dictionary, I pulled it up. I just Googled fear definition, and this is what came up. Fear is to be afraid of someone or something as likely to be dangerous, painful, or threatening. And so in our life, we're afraid when we're thinking, wow, this thing could hurt, it could threaten, or it could be dangerous. You guys see how closely they can be related? Fear, it, there's no, nothing that's happened yet that we're afraid of. We're afraid of something we don't see. We're afraid of a possibility of what might happen. Whereas faith is having hope in what we don't see the possibility of what hasn't happened yet. It's all about what the object is. It's all about belief. Fear is believing, really deep down, it's believing that God's word isn't true enough. But faith is believing God's word is absolutely true and every word of it is true. And to have true faith, you have to know what God's word says. You have to know. But I think a lot of times in our choices, I'm assuming most of us in this church are Christians, or at least claim to be Christians. We all know Christian is someone who's accepted Christ in their heart. I think we all make a lot of choices in this life, and we desire to make choices out of faith, but without even realizing it, a lot of our choices are influenced by fear. And a lot of the way we walk in life, the decisions we have before us that we're conflicted about, fear is a big driving factor that causes us to make choices that don't glorify God. I know that's true in my life. Fear is a big driving factor that causes me not to do the things that I know are right, because I'm afraid. I'm afraid something's going to hurt or be painful or be dangerous. Some of you, I'm assuming John Cook, because he's on the internet like crazy. I friended him on Facebook after the pastor's conference this year, and every like 30 minutes there's something new on Facebook. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Some of it's really good stuff, and he's got me really excited about the movie The Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah? Uh, there you go, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It looks awesome. Um, but you might have seen uh, this spring, Jim Carrey did a commencement speech at a very small private university in Iowa. It, I won't go into all of what I think about Jim Carrey or about the university he went to. Um, because I think we have some different beliefs. But one thing he said in his speech I think is absolutely true. Absolutely true. He said, so many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. We as people, as especially men, are very good at pretending we're afraid of nothing. But really we make choices and disguise it. Our choice is made out of fear, but we're really good at explaining why we did it and making it seem like this is the right thing to do because it's practical. 
And I think a lot of times, practicality is a great thing, mind you. Being practical is great. But if it's practicality based on fear, rather than practicality based on faith, you're really not going to do anything for God with your life. And so I think a lot of times, we Christians are overly cautious because of this fear that drives us. Fear of the world, fear of what people are going to think of us, fear of maybe this isn't the right choice. All kinds of fear. I know in my life there's a lot of fear that's caused me not to do what's right. A few days ago, I shared the story with the LTers. Um, I was driving back from Montana, and we stopped at the gas station in Minneapolis, or Minnesota, and there was a bus full of hippies, like actual real-life hippies. I've never seen real hippies before. These were like real hippies. There's like six of them in this big old bus. The guy was standing out playing the banjo, and the girl came up to us and was like, hey, excuse, us, excuse me, I was wondering if you could spare a gallon of gas because we're stranded and trying to get to Minneapolis. I'm like, okay, hippies don't scare me. That's cool. I've never met them. It's kind of like a special thing. So I bought them some gas, did the right thing, good thing. I bought gas for some hippies. I was feeling pretty good about myself, you know? <laughs> but then as I was driving away, I had a thought in my head. My thought was, Tom, you should give them a gospel tract. This summer, we all printed up our testimony, our story of how we came to Christ. And I had a few of them in my car. I'm like, wow. This is an opportunity. I can share not just the love of the gasoline, but the love of Jesus with them and help them understand why I did what I did. This is exactly what God wants me to do. I know it. But it's going to be inconvenient. And the other people in my car probably just want to keep going. And it'll take some time. I'll just drive by. I just whew, drove by. They waved at me. I waved at them. I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, ah, I bought gas for some hippies. It's a good day good day. And the Holy Spirit convicted me, Tom, you know that choice you just made? That choice, you bought gas, that's good, but the second choice, you chose not to go do what you knew what you ought. Out of fear. You were afraid. You were afraid the people in your car would be feeling inconvenienced. You were afraid that maybe the hippies would reject you, which is funny because they're hippies, right? They love everybody. Um, I'm like, wow, it, it dawned on me. I just did not share the gospel with six people in a van driving to Minneapolis with a banjo because I was afraid. I was afraid, plain and simple. I had all the explanations. Well, it's going to take time, and we're busy. We've got a long way to drive. We'll just keep going. But really, deep down, I was just afraid. Fear drove my decision. It was just such a minor thing, but I think that happens to each and every one of us every single day. We know in our heads the Holy Spirit prompts us with an idea. You could do this. You should go share with this person. You should go over and talk to that person. You should buy some gas. You should buy your wife flowers today. And we're like, ah, oh, it's expensive. No, forget it. Too pra I'm too practical for that. And we reject good things and right things God wants us to do. Because our practicality is just covering up fear instead of faith. So I just wanted to share a couple of thoughts with you guys here that have been helpful to me in helping to decide what I can do. Because I think... Every decision we make, every decision we make, if we take the time to slow down, check our hearts, and work on remembering God's word, we can make decisions out of faith rather than fear. And maybe nobody around us will ever know the difference, but to God it makes all the difference. So, did you know the Bible says do not fear over a hundred times? God says it a lot to a lot of different people. God does not want us to be afraid. The reason why is because of what he's told us in his word. If we have faith in his word, fear won't be a factor in our lives. If we really believe where it says in Romans 8, 28, that God works all things together for good, for those who are called, who love him and are called according to his purpose, if we really believe every single little detail of our life, God can redeem it and make it into something good for us. If we really believe that, what are we ever afraid of? If we get in a car crash and are paralyzed, well, God can use that for good. God loves you. If you have faith and really believe God's word, that someday our bodies are going to be, you know, no more. He'll give us new bodies, better bodies. I hope I look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know. <laughs> then 
I don't have to worry about this body as much. And I'm not afraid about what happens to this body. It's just, it's just a piece of meat. The real me is inside. I have faith that someday the real me is going to be in heaven and it's going to love every minute of it. Right now, I'm only 29, but parts of me are creaking and falling apart and hurt and things like that. I don't want to get as old as Dan. I sure don't want to get as old as Dave. That's scary. That's, yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. And so a lot of times, I know my friends, they work out really hard because they're afraid. They would try to keep good care of their body because they're afraid of later in life. They're afraid that what they're doing is going to have repercussions later that they're not going to like. And that's okay. I'm not saying that's wrong. But I think they're missing out on an opportunity. Because I think what should really motivate us is faith. What does God say? This body's nothing. But it's a, God says it's his temple. I take care of it. Well, I don't. I, I should. <laughs> I'm still young. I'm riding the young bubble where I don't actually have to work out or like eat right yet. Someday I will. But <laughs> take it for what it's worth. Um, I want to take care of my body and I want to be fit because this is God's body. I want to take care of it because he's given it to me as a stewardship. Not because I'm afraid of the future, but because I trust God now. I trust that it will please God if I do what's right with my body that he's given me. I have a house. I don't fix up my house just because I'm afraid of what will happen in the future if I don't. I do it because God's entrusted it to me as a stewardship. And I want to take every step I can to be a good steward of the house because God entrusted it to me. He's expecting me to do well with this house. I think every choice we make, saving for retirement, taking the kids to baseball practice, not that I know anything about that yet, or the saving for retirement part, but. Um, Every choice we make, we can have a choice between I am afraid for my future and where my money is going to come from in retirement. Or save out of faith, going, I want to choose. I know what's right. God is the one who's in charge of finances. He could take care of me if all the money in the world burned up right now and I had no money for the rest of my life. God promises he'd take care of me. He says, seek first your, my kingdom and my righteousness and everything else will be taken care of. If we really believe that, we won't worry about tomorrow. But I think a lot of times we do worry and we disguise it. So I want to encourage you guys today to do two things. One is to know the promises of God. To know the promises of God. It's not Dan's job or Dave's job or anyone else's job to tell you what God's word says. You guys have a Bible. And if you don't have a Bible, I'll give you mine because this is really important. For you guys to walk in faith, you guys need to know what God's word says. And in order to choose what is true and right and to walk in faith with the correct hope, you need to know what has God said he is going to do. What's God's end of the bargain? For me, a big fear in my life was getting married. I'm 29. I don't know. All my, most of my friends are married by now. I'm one of the last ones. People made fun of me for years for like, Tom, when are you going to get married? Every freshman from Purdue University who comes in is like, you're 29 and not married? Is there, is there something wrong with you? you know? And seriously, I was afraid. I was afraid. I made a choice. I really believed you know, God can help me find a very good wife. I don't want just to marry someone. I want someone who is going to help me pursue the kingdom of God with my whole heart. I won't settle for anything less than that. I want to run hard for God's kingdom. But I was afraid, what if, what if God doesn't do that? What if that's not the way God works? What if I am, like my uh, grandma keeps reminding me, is like, Tom, if you're not dating girls, you're never going to find anyone. What if that's true? You know, and I was afraid. But knowing God's word, I planted my flag, like the song we say, sang earlier, on Christ the solid rock I stand. I planted my flag on the word of God. And decided, no, I don't care what my fears say. I'm going to believe God's word, take it at face value, and not worry about it. If God said something, he's going to do it. I believe that in Psalms it says, no good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And so I believed 
that if it was good for me to have a wife, God would give it to me. And if he hasn't given it to me yet, then therefore it's not yet good. Instead of worrying about, is it going to happen, I could have faith and believe, based on God's word, that it's not good yet. It's not good yet. Someday it will be. Right now it's good for me to be single. But later it will be good for me to be married, if that's God's will. And if not, that's okay. I trust God. I can walk in faith instead of fear. And so I challenge you guys, get in the word. At our church, our other pa- one of our other pastors, he has a journal where every time he's reading in the morning, he finds a, something, a promise of God, he writes it down in his journal. And he's got this book, it's just pages and pages and pages of God's end of the bargain, of what God's going to do. And a lot of God's promises are conditional, where God says, if you do this, I will do this. Like if you are really concerned about seeing people come to Christ, as we should be, it says, he who sows abundantly reaps abundantly. He who sows sparingly reaps sparingly. And then we can see, oh, God's word says, if I sow abundantly, I will reap abundantly. And that's something I could stand on. That if I go out and I share the gospel with a lot of people, we'll see people come to Christ. Amen. That's awesome. But I think a lot of us sow sparingly, and God's word is still true. We reap sparingly. And so if we're walking, a lot of times I'm super afraid when I'm sharing the gospel, because what if they don't accept it? But if I'm walking in faith, I realize it doesn't matter if they accept it or not. If I sow it enough, somebody will. Somebody will accept it. God's pleased with the sowing. He's the one who causes the growth. I don't need to worry about it. Stand on God's word. Know his promises. It'll help you in your life. And the second thing I would challenge you to do, so the first one was stand on God's promises, know his word. And the second one is to start to understand your heart. Sorry. Start to understand your own heart, okay? Proverbs, it says, watch over your heart, for from it flows the springs of life. I think in our head, most of us know a lot of the right answers about what it means to follow God. Or at least we're growing in that. And that's a good thing. If you're coming to church, you're hearing the word taught, and that's great. But a lot of times, deep down in our heart, we believe something else. And maybe you don't recognize this yet. What you feel in your life is what your heart believes. What you feel in your life is what your heart believes. And I found this to be true. If I believe in my head, that everything's going to be okay, but my heart's saying, it's not going to be okay. Something's going to go wrong. Deep down in my heart, there's a conflict. I'm double-minded. My heart believes something else, and my emotions follow whatever my heart believes instead of what my head believes. And a good thing to do in life is when a decision is coming your way and you're freaking out about it, oh my goodness, what do I do? Just slow down. And What is my heart saying right now? Like, I don't want to think about all the logical decisions I have to make. What is my heart telling me right now? And does that line up with the scripture? Does that line up with what God says? And that's helped me a lot in a lot of decision making. And at Purdue University, there's a lot of students who are making big life choices. Like, okay, I don't know what major I'm supposed to be in. What should I do? Or, oh wow, I have the opportunity to either go to Wisconsin for the summer or get an internship. What do I do? And there was a young man named Josh. I was talking with him about this. He wanted to go to the summer program. He just accepted Christ in this fall. He wanted to go to the summer program. But he was also thought, I need an internship in order to graduate. And so I was talking to him about, okay, well, slow down. And he was really, really anxious, really worried about this decision. And so we sat down and we talked about it. And I'm like, Okay, why do you want to go to the Dallas? Like, well, because I know it'll be good for me. I know it'll be good for my faith, and I know it's the right. It, God would want me to do that. Okay, good. Why do you want to get an internship? He said, because I am afraid that if I don't have the internship, I won't get a job when I graduate. My instructor told me if I don't have an internship, I won't get a job. And so we talked through that. It's like, okay, is that true? Does God's promise hold that if you seek first his kingdom, 
that everything will be added to you, including your future of employment in terms of being able to care for yourself and care for others. And so we talked about it, and he, he prayed about it a lot. He thought, wow, I think the Dells seems to be the right choice. But later on, he started praying about it. I was like, you know, I think the internship actually is the right choice. And so he went down and got the internship. He's down there in faith. He's running hard. He's sharing the gospel with his new coworkers and his friends and different things. And I don't know his whole heart, but I do know that neither of the, the choices in and of themselves were right or wrong. But the question was, where was Josh's faith? Was he going to let the fear be what really drove him? Or was he going to make a choice based on the word of God? And I was encouraged by him that he slowed down enough to not just go, well, I need a job. I'm really freaking out about this. See if later faith, I'm going to go choose the world because I'm afraid of what's going to happen. But he had enough center of mind to slow down and recognize what the choice really was. It was, can I, should I give my summer to pursue God, or is this the summer God wants me to get an internship? Because getting an internship was a good thing for him. But if he had made the choice just out of fear, I think that would have been sin to him. If he hadn't walked and made the choice with God's help, it wouldn't have been right. So, those were my thoughts for you guys for today. I just want to encourage you guys. I think fear is a, a subtle thing that we miss a lot. Um, I don't know if it's something that you struggle with as much as I do. I do a lot. And if we walk in faith, there's a verse I read this morning in 2 Thessalonians. I think if we walk in faith, God is the one who gives us the peace. It says at the end in 2 Thessalonians 3.16, it says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all time, in every way. The Lord be with you all. And so if we walk in with the Lord in our decisions, Foundation Bible Church, inconveniently located two blocks northwest of the Janesville Athletic Club.